Tommy Dreamer, the founder of House of Hardcore, returning here to Fight Network. And Tommy, it's great to have you back here in Toronto. Nice to be back here with all my fellow peeps, having a great time. I've eaten way too many Tim Hortons donuts uh, while I've been here. But I went to the Jays game, and they had the nice walk-off with Russell Martin. And it's ignited their, uh, you know, a little bit of a win streak. And they need that magic back at that stage. Well, they need, they need to be hitting, Tommy. So maybe you have given them I brought it back. I brought them back to life. So I'm their good luck charm here for Toronto. I'm an official Torontonian. Or on Toronto, what is it? Torontonian. Hey, I said it You've correctly. got the lingo down. You're an honorary <laughs> citizen by I this gotta point. i got to say A and we're good. There we go. Our favorite letter of the alphabet. <laughs> House of Hardcore, it, you look at the, the history of your shows, which coming up this year, you're coming up on four years since your, your first card, and that you always try and isolate points of the show to, to honor certain people. When you guys were here last, it was for Tracy Brooks, and we saw the recent tribute for Balls Mahoney, and I can tell that's something very important to you to, to, to honor a lot of these performers, uh, because fans also want that too. Yep, uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you have a character who's been on television for all these years, whether it's a sitcom, whatever, you need closure for the viewer as well as for the wrestler. The wrestler needs that final goodbye, that walk off in the sunset. You know, with, with Tracy Brooks, and I, and I remember it like it was yesterday, she was like, what if they don't remember me? And wrestling fans have just such a unique passion, and they remember every single thing that you've done. And it went from, you know, her having doubt in herself to everyone saying, one more match, please don't go. And she hadn't been on television for so long, and it was just like, you need that. I know I needed that for, you know, when I left WWE the first time, you know, and I, I just, I said goodbye to ECW, and it was just, it's a cool moment, too. And, and you know, if a television series is coming to an end, a lot of people, they love the finales or they hate the finales, but you need that closure because you've invested so much time in people. And, you know, me too, it's also like the one thing I always hated was once you're off of television or you're, you're gone from WWE, people just think, oh, you're retired or, you know, you're not wrestling. Last year, I wrestled 182 dates in one year, and I had to be reminded by my wife, and she said, you know, you're semi-retired and 44 years old <laughs> at the time, and uh, I was just like, yeah, and you know, that's, that's a full-time schedule, and yes, I did go back to WWE for a little bit, but it, it's just stuff like that, I, I love that, and also, you know, it's also for me, coming from ECW and having s witnessed so many special moments, and when it's cool because when I bring, you know, wrestling, to the old ECW arena and I'm getting to see my people who are on the card experience what I got to experience almost on a weekly basis of these magical, magical moments that people still talk about 15 to 20 years later. When it comes to booking people and who you want in your locker room, what, what are big things for you of how you want to, of what you want in your locker room and maybe more importantly what you don't want to bring into it? Uh, I don't want to bring what my slogan is, no politics, no BS, just wrestling. I want people, uh, I love the Sandman to death. He is one of my closest friends. Sandman is a horrible wrestler. I will never book Sandman to be a wrestler. I still can't book him in Canada because he can't get across the border. But um, because he's my friend, I have booked him on every show that I can in the sense of hit his music, drink a beer, swing a cane. I don't want to see the Sandman go out there and make people, oh look, same man looks old now. Same man isn't old now, but you know what? He can still swing a cane. I want everyone, the biggest thing is you can still have to go in the ring for me. And just that, hey, I just want to go out there and entertain. You know, we, we've talked about this before, about the word hardcore has been promoted as, you know, blood and guts and violence. No, it's a work ethic. And it's a work ethic for, you will do everything that it takes possible to entertain the fans. And that's what I always want in my locker room. And I've always established pretty much and assembled a great team. Uh, if I have, you know, uh, you know me, I'm a big fantasy guy, and you know I uh, spend a lot of money to put out my own fantasy team <laughs> out there. But my team has always won a championship for me on on all my shows, and I couldn't be prouder of the people that I bring in. Take us into. Um into Philadelphia at the recent uh, House of Hardcore event. It was just just after the passing of Balls Mahoney. You've also recently lost Axel Rotten, Hack Myers. I mean, tell me in, in your mindset, I mean, when, when you see some of your colleagues that pass away, is something like that is a very cathartic for you to have a ceremony like that in the ring. And is it something that it still hits you as much as the first time someone close oh, yeah. to you passed on? I mean, Absolutely. Um, when, when, when Balls, I call him Balls, uh, John Reckner, passed away. I spoke to his wife about two hours 
after it hadn't happened and you know she was distraught and I cried my eyes out I, I really did and then that's how I mourn I will cry 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 I will, and then I don't mourn your death I celebrate your life and you know I will go on every bit of social media hey watch Balls Mahoney wrestle against Masato Tanaka watch him wrestle Rob Van Dam you know watch him wrestle against the Dudleys and you will see celebrate their life you know none of us are guaranteed another day and, and celebrate somebody's life that they loved doing what they were doing you know and just that's how I like to remember people and you know that's how I want if people to remember me you know just uh, I lived my dream and, and you know I'm, I'm famous for you know having heart and passion for wrestling well, everybody who steps in the ring does that and for Balls Mahoney same thing man he, he was wrestling since he was 13 years old with, with Chris Candido <clears throat> so just go out there and, and Go on the WWE Network, go on YouTube, watch some of his stuff and enjoy it. You know, same with China. You know, watch her with Eddie Guerrero, watch her with uh, Chris Jericho, because that was some to me when we're finer moments in her career and celebrate her life and, and be like, man, I'm going to miss her, but, you know, thank you for letting me be a part of your life. What is the advice you give to, to younger talent that is maybe getting their first major break and they're at a young age, they're experiencing fame for the first time and how to deal with it? Because that was very much the ECW locker room. You were, you guys were the hometown team every, every other weekend and it was an incredible amount of celebrity upon a very young locker room at the time. Oh, yeah, um, in ECW it was different because if there ever was uh, sex, drugs and rock and roll, that was the last bastion of ECW. There was a lot of uh, crazy, crazy moments. A lot of people always say, hey man, could you write a book, whatever. I would love to write a book, but a lot of stuff we did was illegal. And uh, if the cell phone camera was around then as it is now, forget about the you know stories. It, it's, it was crazy, crazy times. But uh, you know, with, with me, I was never, I was never a drinker. I was never into drugs, and I'm not like you know preaching. It, it's your personal lifestyle. And then now at 40, I see a lot of people who, if they have lived a harder lifestyle, you have felt it, or sadly, they're no longer here. Um, <clears throat> always, hey, and enjoy every moment of it. Enjoy that, you know. Like for me, I'm loving that I'm here on your show. Because who would ever thought a kid from Yonkers could come into Toronto and be on every network and be with real media places, and, and that's awesome, you know. Or you've traveled the world, you got paid to see the world. You may not ever make it to WWE or whatever happened. But enjoy that moment because there is nothing wrong with being an independent wrestler. As well as you started on a journey. And there are people who never leave their hometown. There are people like, oh man, I want to do this. I always want to do that. And they don't ever try. Mm -hmm. And you've tried and someone, I don't care if you're the, uh, an unknown or, or like a wrestling student uh, of mine, you're an unknown person and someone you have made yell at you, smile, or you set out on a journey and you have surpassed someone that you, your high school buddy or something like that. I said, take that as a merit because you accomplished something. And you should have goals in your life. You know, look at the rock clock. We all have a, get that rock clock, he yells at you, he tells you what to do, establishes all that stuff. I've argued with my rock clock twice already. Is there a Tommy Dreamer clock maybe in the No, works? that would be uh, wake up, maybe eat some pasta, some donuts, and then go back to sleep. That uh, would be the Tommy that Dreamer could be, clock. That could be a good sell with some people. <laughs> people would be that. very unhealthy if it was they lived the Tommy Dreamer <laughs> rock clock style. You may not be able to write the, uh, the uncensored ECW history book, but I think you could definitely write a book on your relatively short time in talent relations, which I think maybe you could fit a number of volumes with. You know, it was a right. decade ago, and you were there in the trenches at the time, and you look today to the WWE, the hiring policies, it seems that the scope is wider than ever. Um, just watching this firsthand, how has that developed in the WWE and the audience that they are now catering to? The more politically correct era, I would like to say, <laughs> as well as, you know, but, but you have to be, you know, they, I mean, and now they're, to hire you, one, they have oh, about a pack of papers this big, and they also want to go back for all your social media content. Were you on this, were you on that? Hey, were you on certain dating sites, you know, because you have to look at, at people's past, and, you know, and yes, they are people's past, and they may not be people's future, but if, hey, if you're going to have said comments on social media or if you had said stuff that could be you know deemed inappropriate controversial you go on Facebook whatever your life at that time was about it could come back and haunt you later on you know it, you have to be more socially and morally responsible 
But on, on the other hand, it has helped, hey, maybe this wrestler has a birth defect with their heart, uh, or hey, this person is a little, you know, has something going on with their body that they need to get checked out. As you know, also with WWE, they have an amazing wellness program uh, to help the athlete and, and the professional wrestler, which is pretty 50-50 uh, in the sense of it's not a real sport, it's almost like Hollywood. Hollywood doesn't drug test for you know PEDs or all that stuff, but WWE does. But that's for the betterment of the athlete. So it's you know it's that catch twenty two for someone if you want to be out there and you want to be in the limelight uh, or just get a job in WWE, you have to make sure your past is cool as well as your present. And, and the health and safety is such a, a big issue at this yes. point. And you go back to to Daniel Bryan, and it was an incredible speech that he gave on live television. I, I'm curious how Tommy Dreamer reacts to something like that, where you have probably gone through many of these same <laughs> issues yeah. that, that Daniel Bryan has now seen his career come to an end to. What is your reaction, seeing something like that as it plays out? Because it's something that, for instance, someone like me cannot really appreciate. If you go degree. back and watch the WWE Network, I don't know if they pulled any of the footage or you go on YouTube where they don't pull any footage. You know, in ECW, we used to hit me as hard as you can with a steel chair, and you did not put your hands up. In the 2016, there should never be another chair shot to anyone's head on anyone's level, because now we know more about concussions and we know all that. I know I've had a lot of concussions. I, dude, it's weird. I broke my neck. I broke my back. I, I've torn both my pecs. I've torn my bicep. I've, torn, I've never had a surgery. And wow. I think everyone is just different. Sure. You know, uh, my wife uh, on one of my House of Hardcore shows, Lance Storm of all people, clotheslined her, and she got a bad concussion. And that was in 2013. Still to this day, she has an effectiveness where you see a light and she'll be like this. Wow. And that's, she had just one concussion, you yeah. know? And, and, you know, with, with Chris Nowinski and what he's doing with, the, you know, the Concussion Institute, he's also dating back to, when did you get your first concussion of? I know for myself, my first concussion ever in the history of Tommy Dreamer, I'm playing Frisbee and I got it, I got it, and I ran into a tree. Wow. Knocked out, nine years old. And uh, had nothing to do with wrestling, sports, whatever. Then I got thrown off of a horse, so I probably think it was about 11. So I had two concussions before getting into professional wrestling. But so far, I've uh, been pretty uh, good. The only thing I've seen uh, for myself, but I also don't know if that's just old age, is uh, my handwriting is horrible. Mm -hmm. And I've seen things that I've signed a long, long time ago. And not as Tommy Dreamer, because he has just a regular, but as myself, Tom Lachlan, and I've seen things that I've signed, like, whoa, my handwriting has totally regressed. And I don't know if that's just due to certain head trauma, but, or, you know, just being older. You know, with Daniel Bryan, it came down to, he, he, he took this test and it was able to give him some information that drastically changed his career. I mean, if so, something was like available to that for you, would you want to know that? Because I, I don't know how many athletes would necessarily want to know their, if they have their basic cognitive functions, do you really want to know that? I think for me personally, if I was having health issues, Yes, I'd want to know what's going on. If I just say, hey, I'm going to go to the doctor today for no reason, then I have no, for me, I have no side effects. I know uh, a couple of years ago, I was having a really bad time walking. And I was like, man, my back is horrible. I had to go for an MRI. And they basically, the guy, it was funny, he's looking at the MRI of my back, and then he like looked back at me, and he goes, how did you get here? I go, I walked. He goes, you have uh, bone spurs on every vertebrae. And they were kind of hooked like that. And then he was just like, he goes, not, he goes, on every vertebrae. He goes, I don't understand how you're not, how you're walking. He goes, how much pain are you in? I said, it's okay. You know, uh, the only time I feel pain is when I fly. And uh, when I broke my neck, or I broke my back. Uh, when I broke my neck, I didn't know I broke my neck. And I continued wrestling for like four months. And then uh, Lance Storm uh, wrestling him, he has caused me some pain in my life with my wife and now myself. Anyway, I herniated three discs because my, my body, uh, healed wrong, and I blew out three discs on Mother's Day, uh, wrestling him, that Lance Storm, a fellow Canadian. So, uh, and then they were like, hey, uh, when did you break your neck? And I was like, what? Because you know, you think you break your neck, you're, you're gonna be paralyzed or dead. And uh, the guy's like, yeah, right here. And you have scar tissue. And you know, he kind of said it was like, a, if you get a cut, you heal. 
you, you know, you get a scab, but then you're going back and wrestling again, so you're picking off that scab, so it's going to make your cut bleed again. But, uh, you know, back then, ECW were weekend warriors. He goes, you're not really giving your time, body to heal, and you basically blew out three discs in your back. So I was like, oof, not bad. You know, I was 28 years old. But um, it's, I, I had, at one point, I was like, man, I think I need back surgery and stuff, and then it just went away. And, but when I did that, they said the worst thing you could do for your back is sit in a car, sit in a plane, and sleep. That's where people get most of their back injuries, besides what you do for a living. And it just, it was so bad where I was like, man, I don't think I could fly to Japan anymore, or fly to Australia. And then I just made a few adjustments in my own like training and I, a back pillow, and I'm okay. So just little tweaks like that, and I'm good so far. I am keep on going. I messed up myself because I had Terry Funk as my mentor, and he's in his 70s, and he's still wrestling. And whenever he blows out his knee or whatever, he just gets a new one and keeps on going. So, Yeah, well, that's the famous scene from Beyond the Mat where they're pulling up. They're like, you should not be walking at this point. And it's just, you know, that's a natural segue in the fact that you guys will be going to Australia in June. Yeah. So maybe it's nothing in the ring. It's just the plane ride that's going to be the biggest <laughs> That'll issue. That'll be my hardest battle, yes. Or it could just be the fact that I love donuts and so much and my butt is getting bigger and the seats are getting smaller. How, how have you, Jim Cornette, I believe, was the one who coined the phrase, if you want to become a millionaire in wrestling, start out as a billionaire. What has, <laughs> what has worked for House of Hardcore that, that, has, that has resonated with people, that has brought you to places like Australia, that, that has kept this going? It, it, it's a very difficult industry to promote if you don't have those letters WWE on the marquee. Right. Uh, one, I think my relationship with the fans that I've always had, uh, I've also always stuck to my word. Um, in, for myself as for well in my promotion. It's funny, uh, I just, in Philadelphia, I had, uh, I was wrestling Pepper Parks and, and Cherry Bomb tripped me. I got on the microphone and said, I knew you were gonna do this. I got someone, uh, you know, who's got, gonna watch my back and everyone started chanting for Beulah. And I said, no, guess what, remember? She's never gonna be back again. That's my own wife. And, cause I made a stipulation in my own company. She will never be by my side in wrestling ever again. And I will hold true to that forever. And I what a think, novel concept for stipulations. They have value and the fans <laughs> believe them. Exactly. Uh, I, you know, in, when I did, uh, the, wrote the show for TNA, I said I will never wrestle Raven ever again. And I never did. And you know, even when I left WWE, I never said I'm retiring. I said I will never wrestle in ECW ever again. And I did. I will, I will always stick to my word and I think that's one for being a promoter or if there are rules in professional wrestling. It, if people are paying to see the goodbye of Tracy Brooks in professional wrestling, fine. If Tracy Brooks wants to come back and wrestle somewhere else, but I will never use Tracy Brooks ever again, not because I don't like her or you know she could come hang out in the back, whatever, but I will never use that as a promotional tool <clears throat> to get somebody's, you know, come to see a show. Because then I feel like, hey, well, here's your money. Guess what I did? <laughs> I took it from you. No. It, it, that's a stipulation that you need to uh, stick with. And, and I honestly, I learned that from Paulie. I remember when he would split up uh, tag teams, he'd be like, I will never use them ever again. And it's not a vindictive thing. It's just that you have to stick to your word. And, you know, just like in life, you should stick to your word. Mm -hmm. uh, as we wind things down here, I wanted to uh, quickly ask you about NXT and what you have seen uh, just as a viewer of, of this show. And I go back to when ECW was relaunched. Was this the vision that a lot of people wanted it to be? And could it have become that? Absolutely. I want to say it's almost the exact model. And if you look at a lot of the towns that they go to and the arenas that they yeah. go to, it was the exact model that we had uh, put together. And ironically, it was the guys who brought the original ECW back was Shane McMahon and John Laurinaitis uh, back to WWE. And it was just going to be on the website, correct? It was supposed to, uh, at first it was going to be on the web and then, you know, it was going to get picked to television, but it was supposed to be totally, total, total different product than WWE. And, you know, with literally after the first show, it was just another WWE show, but whatever. But the NXT product is an awesome product. I love the fact that they brought me in as a surprise in Philadelphia and Albany. Ironically, I think that's why I got called up rather quickly to the roster. Uh, this quite a run. Year. <laughs> but um, it, it's, I love the show. I love the product and, and the fact that they're using people. If you, if you think about the business, man, the business has changed besides from social media, but the business has changed within the last two to three years of there are people 
that are stars in WWE that would never have been thought about three to four years ago. You know, AJ Styles, you know, they would say because of his height or, or Kevin Owens because of his, his appearance or, you know, the fact that he wears a t-shirt and shorts, all that stuff. But those guys killed it in NXT or killed it uh, everywhere else. And now you could argue those two are the, are the top guys consistently, week in, week out right now on yep. the main roster. <clears throat> Absolutely. Dean Ambrose is another one. I mean, it, it, it's... And the fact, I love like, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks, uh, which now is Tuesday morning quarterbacks for wrestling, you know, and the fact, you know, yourself, you, you get to sit there and talk about something you've loved, professional wrestling for a long time. You get to talk about storylines, you get to talk about what's going on. It's become pop culture. You just saw the, the one thing, and I know you're not a negative person, the only thing wherever I see is where people are like, oh, well, they should do this, they should do that. It's very, very hard to say someone should do something when you just set an attendance record and you just had a $17 million uh, gate. If I do a $17 million gate, I promise you, uh, I would just be like, happy smile for the rest of my time. And anything positive, negative, I would just be like, yo, I just made 17 mil on a show. Like, let yeah. me enjoy that. So. Biggest, biggest wrestling show in history <laughs> yes. uh, a couple of weeks back. And uh, maybe you'll come close to it. With, I'm hoping. With, with House of Hardcore. It's the Canadian up. dollars are uh, picking back up. It is, uh, it is picking up. Tommy, always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Thank you so much.